Today on Rock the Park, we're hitting the high notes. Oh, Whoa, listen to a bugle. Wow. And hitting the trail, where mountain life opens up a whole new perspective. There's definitely a lot of exposure. And even the tiniest detail makes all the difference. We're literally hanging by this anchor right here. We're exploring the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, that's a long ways down. And it all starts now. I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. This week, we're in Rocky Mountain National Park, the highest park in the country. This place is all about mountains. The air might be thin, but the views are spectacular. With 60 peaks above 12,000 feet, plus hundreds of lakes and mountain streams, it's no wonder Rocky Mountain is one of the most visited parks in the US. The park is located in the front range of the Rockies, just 70 miles northwest of Denver, Colorado. This is gonna be great. Yeah, I'm <laughs> pumped, man. We're gonna be doing everything on this trip, you know it? Yeah, Biking, basically. climbing, riding. Yep, we're gonna saddle up for a true Western experience, hike the backcountry, then scale a sheer rock face called the Twin Owls. But first, we're heading out on the park's famous Trail Ridge Road, and we don't get far before something stops us. Oh, whoa, listen to a bugle. All right, so right now we've got a huge elk right outside of our car. He just bugled. This is unbelievable. Look at the size of his rack. Oh my gosh. During mating season or the rut, large male elk called bulls make a loud bugle call and display their antlers to attract females and warm the competition. That's incredible, man, right off the bat. Yeah, that was great. We lucked out that we're here in this season when they're in rut. Rocky Mountain National Park has got one of the largest herds of elk. And now you're seeing all these males basically yelling at the top of their lungs to try to attract females. It's quite a spectacle. The Trail Ridge Road offers spectacular vistas, and it's also the highest continuous motorway in the United States. With more than eight miles above 11,000 feet, it climbs from the forest up into the Alpine and beyond. It just looks like such a barren landscape, and it's because we're above the tree line. It's basically tundra. It just shows you how big the mountains are in this park. You can take your car up to 12,000 feet. All right, as awesome as this is, we got some horses waiting for us. We should get down there. Let's giddy up. Okay, this is it. All right. Before we go full on backcountry hiking, we enlist a couple of locals to get us acquainted with the area. I'm going to have you ride Flirt, uh -huh. and you can ride Zach. Zach's a horse, right? He is. Y'all ready to go get on? Yeah. I think so. All right, let's do it. So this is Flirt. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get to know him a bit, you know, before I can you know, say what his character is. We'll flirt with him a bit and see how it goes. Hello, Zach. It's not exactly the name I would have picked. I would have picked like Flash or Tornado. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, buddy. There's something just fitting about being out here in the Rockies on horseback. There's over 350 miles of hiking trails here. This is a great way to experience it. It's how the West should be seen. Right, Zach? We're on a two-hour ride through an area called Horseshoe Park. This U-shaped valley was created thousands of years ago by a 500-foot thick glacier that carried away rocks and debris. Today, it's a prime spot to see wildlife. OK, oh, so we wow. got an elk over here. Oh, oh that thing's huge. That's a big boy. If you look at that elk over there, it's got these big antlers. And they grow those and lose them every year. In some parts of the year, they can grow six inches a day. Rocky Mountain elk are believed to have the largest antlers of all elk. They can weigh up to 40 pounds. Something I noticed right away is he's a little darker than most of the elk that we've seen. Now, one thing these guys will do is they'll roll around in mud and then 
go to the bathroom to kind of create a perfume to attract ladies. A little further along, and we're getting a little glimpse into the more recent history of the park. We see these wagon wheel tracks from the 1930s. It's starting to feel like the Old West, you know? So right now, we're following one of the old wagon trails uh, from the Civilian Conservation Corps that had camps out here. During the Great Depression, President Roosevelt designed the Corps to give the unemployed work to do here and across the country. For nine years, they built roads, trails, searched for lost hikers, and helped make the parks what they are today. After six bumpy miles and a river crossing, it's time to say goodbye to our new friends. All right, here we are. It's nice to have someone else do the work for a change. I know, right? Yeah, buddy, I'm gonna miss you. Seeing the Rockies this way has been pretty cool. But we're ready to rely on our own horsepower. The silence out here is unbelievable. It's almost something you feel. Just look around and realize that there's just life. Ooh. Ooh. It's day two in Rocky Mountain National Park, and Jack and I are headed for higher ground. This is going to be a great hike because we're going to be gaining over 2,000 feet of elevation. A lot of the hikes that we do, you end at 8,000 feet. Here, you start at 8,000 feet. We'll be camping out, so we need a permit before hitting the trailhead. Hey. Hi there. We are headed out into the back country. OK. Yeah. Welcome to Colorado. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so you've got your bear canisters? Absolutely. Yep. OK. Two years ago, we had a major flood in here in the park, right here where you're going to be crossing the Roaring River, the bridge washed out. That bridge oh. has not yet been replaced. People have put logs across. I can't tell you how safe that is or isn't. So you use your own judgment. Is there anything we're going to want to watch out for? When you can, you want to stay on rock instead of going through vegetation and just leave everything as it was. Today's four and a half mile hike is entirely within a protected wilderness area. So we'll be following the principles of leave no trace. That means we'll leave everything just as we find it, and whatever we take in, we'll haul back out. Being prepared is key, especially with what we now know about the river. Well, we've been told there might be some easier spots to cross, but if not, we've got our trekking poles. That's gonna be huge. Trekking poles can help gauge water depth and help with balance. All right, this is it. But when we get to the river, the crossing is relatively easy with some careful footing. Yeah, I'm going to come up here. All right. Now, how do we get across this part? Look, follow this. Easy. Nice. OK. And the shoes remain dry. Ah. The park contains 450 miles of streams and rivers, and that's a good place to spot wildlife. The sound often mistaken for a bald eagle is actually the red-tailed hawk, which are common in Rocky Mountain. These birds of prey use eyesight eight times more powerful than a human's to hunt for rodents like squirrels. The silence out here is unbelievable. It's almost something you feel. Just look around and realize that there's just life. <laughs> That's oh. enough philosophy with Jack. After four miles and over 2,000 feet of elevation gain, we reach a tiny lake that's a great spot to catch our breath. We've been hiking through this awesome pine forest for the majority of the day. Wow. And then we get our first view and see how high up we actually are. Wow. Now you can see that we've gone up, you know, 2,000 feet. Chipmunk Lake is named for these little guys found throughout the park. They have long stripes along the body and head and large cheek pouches that they use to carry nuts and seeds. While you might be tempted to give them a handout, feeding wildlife can make them aggressive or too dependent on people. Our goal of Ypsilon Lake is still a half mile away, but first, we have some work to do. So what we're planning to do is get up to camp, set up, and then go out and check out the view of the lake. We want to make it seem like we were never here for the other people who are going to keep coming to these parks. That means we won't move any rocks or disturb the vegetation. This is a designated campsite, so finding a cleared spot is easy. Remember, a good campsite is found, not made. 
So if you're out in the backcountry, look for places that are naturally free of vegetation. Make sure that your sleeping bag can handle the environment that you're in. This one's rated down to about zero, so it's a little overkill, but hey, I'm gonna be warm. This is gonna be my shelter for the night. It's what we call a bivy sack. And she's ready to go. There's no setup at all. And if it rains, this thing will keep me dry. A great way to protect wildlife is to remove anything that could attract them to your campsite. So we're keeping food and food waste locked away in something called a bear canister. Even if the bear can still smell it, he's not gonna be able to get through this thing. So that you don't unwittingly lure them in, store bear canisters well away from camp. It's about 70 steps. The kitchen. Even though we're in the back country, other people could be around, so it's a good idea to keep your voice down. And the animals, they prefer a little peace and quiet as well. Now that we got camp set up, we're gonna head down to the lake to check out the view and cook some dinner. Ypsilon Lake is just a half mile up from the campsite and is fed by a nearby waterfall. Instead of building a fire, which will use resources and create debris, we're cooking on a portable stove instead. We've talked so much about leave no trace and gone over all the steps. This is why you practice them completely, to keep this looking just like we see it right now, forever. Last day in Rocky Mountain National Park, and it's time to expand our horizons. Our goal is to climb this imposing granite slab known as the Twin Owls. We're trekking up to the base of Twin Owls. It's pretty high up there. Oh, and what goes up must come down. Remember Leave No Trace? There's one principle we haven't covered yet. With so many people using this trail and no bathrooms available, the park decided to make this solution mandatory. Wag bag? Yeah. Disposable travel toilet. I'm hoping that we don't have to use these, but you want to make sure you get your waste in the bag and you carry it out with you. And there's no better way to become a fast hiker than having a wag bag in your backpack. You're going to want to get down to the trailhead as quickly as possible. You're doing your part to keep these places nice and without waste. Nature calls. We'll be prepared. <laughs> A little higher up, we find our guide, Eric, who gives us the lowdown. What is it about these faces that make them so much fun to climb? Just the quality of rock. It's quite solid. There's really good crack systems that form that are really nice to climb on. And the rock is super textured, um, which allows our hands and feet to, to grip to the rock. This is it, a 300-foot multi-pitch climb, which means several sections. The first is short, but the second and third will be more challenging. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be tons of exposure. I know myself. I don't like exposure. Exposure means you're climbing on a rock above steep terrain, where a fall could be catastrophic. So we'll need to put our trust in Eric and the skills we've learned on previous climbs. Can't well, we, climb like this. Yeah, no. we better get geared up. First pitch is short and quick. Eric goes first to set the anchors and ropes. Then, I'm up. Jack and Cole and Belay's on. Climbing ready. You ready? I'm ready. Climbing! Climb on. The first 20 feet are looking pretty fun. There's all these handholds, obvious footholds, and the rock, it's this nice, grippy granite. There you go. Yeah! Maybe wearing shorts was not the best idea. Colton decided to wear shorts rock climbing on extremely coarse rock. Not the brightest move in the world. I can hear you down there. <laughs> but Did you make it? Oh, yeah. Come on, Jack. Here we go. You got this, Jack. Pop my head up. Nice. All right, excellent. Woo. Well done. 20 feet down. <laughs> yeah. 280 to go. Next up is the traverse across the rock face with the killer exposure that Eric warned us about. Come on! As I continue my way across the side of the rock, the handholds and the footholds that were so great and obvious on pitch number one, I'm not seeing them. 
And the moment I come around that corner, I see the exposure that Eric has been telling us about. What's it like up there? There's definitely a lot of exposure. Oh, yeah. This little walkway starts to get smaller and smaller. The hands are that, they're not that great. Just stand on your feet. Yeah, just like that. Eventually, I find a tiny little point to put my foot on. And I find what seems to be an even smaller point to put my hand on. And I start my moves. There it is. Yeah. Ah. Woo, man. That w oh, yeah, that's that exposure you were talking about. Yeah, totally. Got the heart rate going a little bit. So it's really getting windy. Uh, you can just see the trees are just going like that. Yeah, come on! Climbing! The path is gone. All you've got are a few cracks to put your hands and a few little divots to put your feet. Your handholds aren't really that good. You really kind of have to go back to just completely trusting your feet. This drop off is at least now 200 to 250 feet. It is way far down to the ground. And as I'm trying to figure out my next move, the wind starts to blow even harder. You got a gust. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, that wind is blowing right now. Oh, man. Oh, man. We're hanging out in Rocky Mountain National Park, halfway up this awesome granite formation called the Twin Owls. Colton has finished the second pitch, but I'm still climbing, and things just got sketchy. The wind is just blowing. What is the best way to do this? It's tricky, man. I definitely got stuck. There you go, nice. Woo! That blew my mind. <laughs> wow, I was not expecting that. One, one little bit. It's all right. Yeah. That was much more intense than I thought. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> was. Yeah, look at the, you got the ravens just circling us. I don't think they thought we were going to make it. In fact, we haven't made it yet. The final pitch awaits with 150 feet to go and once again, tons of exposure. We're literally hanging by this anchor right here. Just trusting it. Look at this, no hands. We've got a couple hundred feet behind us. Oh, boy. Of course the wind picks up as we make our final climb. Here we go. Good luck, man. <laughs> final push. The wall is definitely vertical. And the more and more I climb, the more exposure I see. Oh, boy. But this is just fun. I can see some great holds, and I just hit my groove. That was nice. OK. Woo! All right! I get to the top, and now I'm just waiting on Jack. Bravo! Climbing! So I start going up, and it's a fun climb. I'm absolutely loving this coarse granite. Your shoes stick like nothing. It gives you the confidence that you can go up something that seems like it might be a little tough. Yeah, it's a long ways down. Near the top, I'm almost 9,000 feet above sea level. There's very little to block the wind, and I'm feeling it. Nice, you're almost there, man. Woo! Nice. All right! Yeah! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this was an awesome day of climbing, and this was a perfect pitch to end on. The view up here is just incredible. From the summit of Twin Owls, we can see straight across Rocky Mountain National Park to the peaks on the Continental Divide. And what an awesome trip. Seriously. We did so many different things, and it showed how much this park has to offer. Yeah, it was cool that we got to go out on horseback, and then we got to have our peace and quiet. But we got some big adventure climbing the Twin Owls. Just looking out at miles and miles of rugged wilderness and mountains that is just so picture perfect. There's a reason it is picture perfect. It's because people are fighting to preserve it. It was a good trip. We will be back. Yes, we will. Can't wait. Rocky Mountain National Park left us on a high note. And remember, hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Oh yeah, okay, so we got an elk over here. 
I don't know if he was rolling around in the mud, but sometimes they will actually do that to emit some, almost a perfume to attract the ladies. <laughs> I don't know about mud perfume. I don't think that would go over for me very well. Well, I can tell you I tried it once and no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.